All right, boys. Um, yeah. So part three of this bit mask behavior tree optimization thing. Um, if you haven't watched the other two videos, you're probably better off, but I'll put a link to them down in the description. Um, and you can find out how we got here, but basically what I'm going to do in this part is explain how I'm moving away from this baguette of, uh, booleans. Uh, which has to be reproduced and repackaged off between different blueprints all the time when dealing with behavior tree variables and then animation blueprint variables and player uh, NPC pawn variables and AI controller each instead of reproducing these balls every time in every blueprint what I'm now doing is I'm basically grabbing the grabbing the ver the boolean variables from the behavior tree uh, encoding them, for want of a better word, into a single um, bit mask integer, then sending that off to which, whichever blueprint needs it. Then at the other end, the integer arrives, it's decoded into a set of Boolean values, and then it can be used to trigger various things. It just means that transportation of all that data between blueprints per tick is just done with one variable, which is an integer, rather than dozens and dozens potentially hundreds of booleans that might be required to trigger various contextual animations sounds um sensing any anything else basically um so yeah let's go over that so the first thing you'll need as i said in the last video is an enumerator and an enumerator is easy to make you just go you just right click here go blueprints and go enumeration okay and you'll be basically confronted with an empty blueprint like this you just add as many enumerators as you like uh, and then name them the one important thing to remember is making sure that the names of the enumerators uh, the, the names you give the enumerators are exactly the same even including capitalization as the names of the booleans you want to call from your uh, behavior tree so they have to match because one of the first things we'll do in the AI controller is 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 call all of those so that's the first thing to remember uh, second thing to remember is to enable bit mask flags that basically allows the enumerator to become bit maskable to be wrapped into the the uh, integer bit mask integer that I explained in the last video okay then okay so the next the next thing you'll need is some way of uh, telling the AI controller, which is where our bit mask operations are going on, that they that the variables need to be updated. So basically, whenever you change a variable in your behavior tree, you need a function that tells the AI controller or whichever blueprint you're using to to deal with your booleans centrally uh, that something has changed. So I'm not going to go too much into detail here about what I've got set up, but you can find plenty of YouTube tutorials that detail this, but all that's happening here is, um, you know, I, I just have a set variable uh, task here. And all this does is um, when it receives the event, uh, choose the variable to set and choose the state to set. So that that's here, you choose the variable and then set state. And then I've got another another function here, which is um, AI event on success. Now an AI event is my own creation and basically what it does is it calls to the AI controller and says hey something has changed and uh, and it says it calls to the state change event. Now in the AI, contro in the AI controller, I should slow down, um, there is the equivalent state change event and that starts our encoding for want of a better word process. So I'm not going to go too much into these. I've got a whole bunch, like I've got a service that can change variables. I've got a, 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 a task that can do it and various other things. They're all covered in the first video. If you, if you want to know. Okay. Next in the AI controller, uh, you'll need to set up an integer that's going to act as your integer that's encoded to, and this needs to be in a special format that is bit masked. Uh, so the way you do that is you just you add a variable. I'll just I'll just leave this as new variable for now because I'm going to delete it and use the one I've got. 
change it to integer, then in the settings, what you'll see is a tick that says bit mask. Tick that and then choose the enumerator that you made, in which in my case is wild animal states. Okay, so this, this new variable will now function as the integer, it is still just an integer, just a, just a, just a solid number, uh, that will encode all of the Boolean states into one long number to then be passed on to the other blueprints. So that's, you need to have one of those to encode. All right, so let's get to the meat of what we're talking about. So what we do first is we use this for each loop, uh, which is based upon the enumerator. So as soon as you create an enumerator in your project, um, Unreal will then give you the option of um, looping through so if I can even type and talk at the same time. Yeah, so it will give you an, an enumeration function that's called for each and then based on that particular enumerator. So you'll get that when your enumerator is created. Um, all that does is it just runs through all of the, um, all of the items in that list uh, in a loop. Uh, so it's quite handy because you don't, you know, otherwise you'd have to create the usual, you know, get get the array, get length, da 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 da. It just does all that in one function. Presumably it's doing pretty much the same thing. Um, so what we do here, and this is why I said earlier that it's important to make sure the names of your uh, enumerator entries are exactly the same as your booleans. What it does is it runs through each of them. We get the name by annoyingly you have to convert to a string and then a name because otherwise you get the prefix of wild animal states. This just gives you the raw name. Um, it runs through all of those and for each one it, it calls from the from the blackboard uh, which is easy to get. I just do that in the initialization here. Get blackboard, set blackboard. You can also just do a blackboard call if you want. It's, uh, it's a bit cheaper to just do it in the initialization and set a local variable but whatever. Um, yeah, so it, it says to the blackboard, hey, can you show me what the value of this, the boolean of this name is? So get value as bool, input the name, and then it spits out true or false. So just to recap, uh, the behavior tree says something has changed. We run through every entry. We say, we say what's the, what, what are the new values of each one? Uh, and then we get the true and false. Then. From those true and false values, we want to encode the integer that we just set up. So what we do is we first call the integer state and we compare it to the new value coming in. So the way bitmask bit masks work is, as I said in the last video, is that you're, you, you only include the data that you want to be true in the list that's sent. So what happens is we we want to only write the values that are true to the integer and send those off. Then what will happen at the other end is that the decoder will compare those true values to all the values and the ones that are there it will consider true, the ones that are missing it will consider false. Okay so what we need to do is if something is true we need to look at the existing uh, integer and add the new value coming in. But before we can add the new value coming in, we need to convert it to a power of two list. Now I won't go into this too much and I covered it in the last video, but you need I made a custom node that does this, but it's, it's the bitmask standard. And that's instead of a list that just counts, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, five, it counts 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 16, 32, etc. Uh, so power of 2. Uh, and the, the custom node I made, and because I made it custom because I'll be repeating this process over and over in a few different nodes, uh, is just like this. So just converts to power of 2, then floor, and that, that bas basically converts into a bit maskable entry uh, from there. Okay, so it's going to take the value from, from the from this loop, it's going to add it. Now, again, as I said in the last video, add is bit is bitwise or in on in Unreal. Don't ask me why; it just is. So 
So we're we're converting to a bit mask, we're adding it to the existing integer, then we're resetting the integer with this with the new version. If it's false, we will remove it if it's there. Okay, so yeah, we're we're basically just we're going we're calling each bool, we're getting its value. We're the ones that are true, we're adding to the current integer, the ones that are false, we're removing. And once our integer has been created, we're, I'm just sending it off to whichever bl uh, blueprint needs it. Now I'm just doing it directly here. I'm sending it off to the uh, the character blueprint, but you could do this with an event dispatcher or uh, an interface, depending on how you want to use it. I don't think those things will be useful if you've got multiple enemies on screen, but you know, it depends on your use case for, for, for these integers. So, okay, at the other end, is the decoding and that's even more simple it just uses a, another custom node which is very similar uh, but just spits out a boolean so here we go state change is the integer coming in now i've set it as, it, as a copy here um, but you don't necessarily need to do that it's just i'm i'm going to use it in some other nodes elsewhere but you could just remove this step altogether and just come straight out and along with a new with a new one but i'm gonna i'm gonna put a check in here but you don't you don't necessarily need to anyway yeah so the same thing there's the exact same loop we run through each one um and basically what happens is the ones as i said before the ones that are there it it considers true and the ones that aren't it doesn't and here is the node set up to do that so there is the other custom node i made so if i show you this one uh it's just the same but all this is doing is the result is then turned into a boolean. So it's just giving me a true or false statement rather than the raw number, the raw name, I should say. Uh, so yeah, that is pretty much the crux of it. Now I can show you what I'm doing with it. So, so yeah, once you've got all those true and falses, what you can then do is um, you can set all sorts of different modes in this character blueprint. So you can see here, I've just got a branch that's just dictating this is true this is false um, and then I've got these um, flow state systems here and all they're doing is um, if something is true spit all this out and do all this so you know on one tick all these things might be true so it it takes the selection name pumps it into this and that turns it into a flow it goes out to those things and if they're false do something else so you can very easily turn this is this is basically turning um, one integer into a whole set of outputs and actions um, which in theory should be a lot lighter on the system obviously that's depending on the on a, on a few things mainly the amount of variables you're sending so I'm expecting to increase the number of variables in my generic um, animal uh, NPC behavior tree uh, and also if you're networked or not so this this process is great for networking because it again in sending it instead of sending lots of calls checking balls you're just sending one integer uh, which then can be encoded and decoded encoded at the server and, and then decoded by the client or encoded by a client sent via the server to another client I'm guessing I'm not yeah, I've not done much work in networking, but that's what I would assume. It's a lot lighter than lots of different checks to Booleans. But um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope I've covered everything, and there's enough detail there for you know you know basic uh, beginners and intermediates to to be able to put these together. Um, but yeah, oh yeah, another 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 advantage of doing this is. Um, in the enumerator when if I added a new let's say I added a new boolean to my behavior tree in order for that boolean to then manifest elsewhere in all the other blueprints that use this system all I would do is go here add the boolean and then that is now manifested here and here so it it immediately creates all the setup well, for any new variables you have straight away. So I don't have to now go in uh, and, and set another channel up like I was doing before. I can just I can just add a new enumerator to the list. 
and we're away. All right, well, if I've missed anything, if there's any questions uh, or any suggestions for new videos, let me know in the comments. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.